Oh, do we have a slappy boy on this one. Skier Ritual is an absolute banger of a game. Bringing back that classic Easter egg hunting, zombie cheek clapping that we all love. What Skier Ritual offers isn't just a COD Zombies clone. It's a complete reimagining of the mode as a full project. There's plenty of similarities between COD's traditional zombies and what Skier has to offer, like a perk system, viable weapons dispersed around the map, a pack-a-punch of sorts, and of course, Easter eggs. The game has four maps currently, each offering its own distinct atmosphere and environmental challenges. There's also map-specific bosses that will spawn in occasionally and play a big part in the completion of the story for each map and the subsequent Easter egg. Each map begins with a sort of quest objective style UI in the top left corner of your screen. Earning money from completing rounds and killing zombies will help you to open up different parts of the map to collect different items or complete different requirements you need to complete each map's story. In between each round, you also get to choose a miracle, which is essentially an upgrade to either your melee or your bullet damage or an ultimate that you can get, which is a super strong move that you can use in really bad situations. You only get to choose 10 miracles, though, so when you are choosing them, make sure to be very careful. I do believe each round the miracles do swap, so if you don't like the ones that you get during one round, you can just wait until the next one, and I think it will flop over. Each map has four overall objectives it will lead you around the map to complete, and after you complete all four of these objectives, you'll be met with a boss version of the guy that's been following you around the map the entire time. Why are you running? Why are you running? Each map has five difficulties at the moment, and these things ramp up fast. I mean, not only are the zombies extremely aggressive, but some of the special zombies are just downright toxic. The banshees and the witches will just teleport behind you when shot, so when things ramp up at about wave 30, they'll just swarm you in groups all behind you at once. The electric and fire guys basically aimbot you across any corridor, so they can shoot you infinitely across any part of the map all at the same time, and it is just horrible. Skier Hotel's dog round, which is every five waves, is specifically just terrible because it's all electric guys and everything goes extremely dark too so it's just complete pitch darkness and then a billion volts of electricity like these things send jewels through your bodies like a freaking telephone wire it's insane the sewer hosts these gladiator dudes that will like super dodge around and rush your ass with high hp and they will beat the barnacles out of you in no time at all the frozen fortress also has these special little ice guys that aim bot frozen air slashes at you they can get pretty annoying but they're not that bad however even with all of these guys in one game at the same time it's almost the perfect level of toxic when I'm playing good and I'm getting things done, I feel like handling circles is efficient and possible no matter the wave that I'm on. My peak wave right now is around 46, and even though that's not necessarily crazy, things get pretty hectic around there. I've only beaten normal mode, however, so I don't know much about hard or nightmare yet. Each map also has a hidden Easter egg that you can start up after you finish the initial story that you get when you start the map. All you gotta do is click on this little machine in the boss room that has a floating gun in it and it will pop out the stranger and then you just shoot him and it starts the hidden Easter egg. The stranger will be a big part of the story later and you'll see him in a lot of cutscenes, so get familiar with the guy. You'll actually get to fight the stranger later in the sewers Easter egg and I'd say his fight is probably probably the hardest out of all of them. I found myself finishing a map story in around 20 or 25 rounds, but it could differ highly depending on who you are, how fast you play, if you want to hold zombies, what difficulty you're playing on, and as I said, I've only played normal up until this point, so it could take way longer in Nightmare. The game has a bunch of achievements as well, all the way from beating easy mode to finding these little dolls that are hidden around every single map and shooting them. Most achievements are also tied to unlocking an in-game cosmetic mask that you can wear around through the rounds that you play. The cosmetics right now in the game are only masks at the moment, sadly, but there is quite a few to collect. I don't even have all of them myself. A good few you can also unlock just from beating the stories on each map on the varying difficulties. I'm hoping the devs add in some full outfit cosmetics, but like I said, I don't even have all the masks unlocked, so I can't be complaining right now. However, weapon skins, 
are 100% needed. Guns change a bit with the Pack-a-Punch. They add some little doohickeys here and there, but they don't change a lot overall at the moment, which is unfortunate. The roadmap in their Discord shows several updates coming out this year with two free DLC maps, uh, several weapon additions, and some other different upgrades and things like that. They don't specifically mention any weapons that they will be adding, but two out of the seven updates currently are for weapons, so I'm assuming either adding in new ones or balancing the current. I would like to see some sort of event system added in with like event tying cosmetics that we can unlock through doing rounds on a special map or something that comes out yearly. I think that could be something that would be cool. With just four maps in the game right now, after beating all the levels, there isn't much to do but mass collecting or achievement hunting. I mean, th there is the two maps coming out for free in the DLC, but those aren't scheduled until way later in the year. We have like three months. The in-game leveling system really doesn't do much except for unlock cosmetic items for your character and different little visual items. I think maybe tying your character level to when you're allowed to upgrade perks could increase the longevity of ambitious playtime in the game. I basically had all my perks maxed out like uh, after the first or second game and from there you can really only hunt masks or achievements so it, it's it's not a lot of extended playability even on hard mode with the maxed elixir of life i can sustain several hits before even coming close to going down so it it makes it virtually impossible to die after you max it out and maxing it out so early just means that you're walking around invincible basically through most of it I think perk upgrades being locked behind the player level would be a simple balance that could give some longevity to the game while also giving players that want to grind it out of reward at the end of the tunnel and making the earlier levels harder for newer players because they don't just get to boost right off the bat. There is some bugs that arise once in a while. Um, I noticed that one game I just couldn't use my ultimate for whatever reason and then a couple days later I played and when I upgraded my AK I just couldn't do damage with it anymore it just gave me nothing but still wasted bullets while i was using it however outside of those two i haven't noticed many and i've only noticed one of them twice and the damage one i've only noticed once so far i did however notice a couple bugs that kind of work in your favor like in the sewers there's a little staircase on the main structure of the radio tower and if you jump against this little pipe, it stops zombies from being able to hit you outside of the fire guys. Watch out for the fire guys. You do not want to become fried chicken. I'm sure there's other little fun out of map bugs to be found for all you glitch hunters as well. The game does need some sort of in-game leaderboard though. They have a discord as I mentioned before and I'm sure that you could figure out some way to post your high rounds in the discord but it's not really the same as seeing your name in the game. That's just a, that's a different feeling. Currently what Skier Ritual offers is what I'd consider a great experience. Reviving a genre that's been somewhat destroyed by other adaptations of it. It offers fluid gameplay, be it a quick one, a sense of progression through upgrading the perks, uh, my favorite thing ever, cosmetics, and most important promises of the future of not just DLC but free DLC at that one. Skier in my opinion is a solid 8 out of 10. Having mostly decent map design, a somewhat decent background story for you to follow along with, and that traditional round-for-round -round zombie slaying gameplay that we've all come to love. I've had a wonderful time putting a solid amount of hours into this game with a buddy, and he's even further than I am if that's any testament to how easy this game is to play. Skier Ritual can be found on Steam for $25, currently on sale until June 9th, for $20, and that's USD, of course. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, remember to like the video if you liked the video, and comment down below what your favorite zombie game memory is. Remember to be safe, be sexy, and be squishy, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Get your hands up!